Welcome. Hello. You made it to the mat. That's the big part. Now you can just relax. Today we're doing a flow class, um, but I'm also integrating this week the idea of general real flow in range of motion in our joints, in balance of partnering muscle groups and so on. So in addition to some of the dog series, warrior series that we think of as flow, I'm going to be inviting you to add a bunch of other little stuff. Um, as always, listen to your body, uh, depending on what you've been up to, it may have a whole series of patterns or things that it's saying, hey, watch out for this or don't take that so far. Um, and that's always our job during our yoga practice. So every time we come to the mat, it's an act of listening and just being with what is. So if at some point you decide that, you know, you need a long Shavasana, lay on down. Uh, we are going to be doing a more of a 45 minute class, um, trying to give people that option to dip in and out a little faster with their yoga. So when you are ready, I'm going to ask you to just stand sideways on the mat, much like I am here. And we're just going to start with that opening pose of the, the arms straight out. It's open hearted, gives plenty of room for our breath. And it gives us a chance to root down and reach up. So find that powerful line of rooting through both feet, reaching up through the crown that doesn't create any kind of craning or tightening in the neck. Close the eyes. Turn your gaze towards that third eye point between the eyebrows and a little up. And from there, begin seeing the landscape of your body as it's rooting and reaching and beginning to take in breath with awareness, noticing the inhale rising, asking, is there more? And the exhale settling. Is there more? Got a couple more just like this with the arms static. If you can, if it's too much, drop them and come back. Inhaling, you might add your ujjayi throat contraction, light connection with the tip of the tongue at the roof of the mouth. And exhaling. One last breath here. Good. And then a long inhale. Turn the palms up, sweeping up maybe taking your head and vision up. If it bothers your neck, relocate it. Glutes a little forward. Exhale, and we're going to bend and flow down like we're kind of gathering something. Good. Inhaling, breath initiating motion. Is there more? Exhaling, flow down. Really letting the head go. It's as if you're going to be here for forever. And then the next inhale comes, sweeping up. And again, remember to always take care of the neck. So keeping the face straight forward is going to be the most easeful. Is there more? One last inhale, and then we're going to bring the arms down to that starting position, except we're going to take the palms now, and they're going to face the floor, and then the wall, and then you and the wall. So you're kind of taking them as far as you can in range of motion here. And some of us will be feeling quite a stretch, um, especially if you've been doing a lot of stuff, uh, gardening and what have you. You might be feeling a stretch even all the way up into the armpit when you go into that flexion. So it's just worth noticing. One more. Good, and then roll the wrists. Good, and what we know is that when we do a movement like this with the joint, a full roll, that we often are moving stuff all the way up into the next joint, right? All those connections. Um, so it's a really great way to warm the whole body. So letting that go, we're going to do the arm up into the shoulder joint and just making nice circles, one direction, breathing, exploring. The more curious we are, the better practice we'll have, the more we'll be able to honor where our body is at today. So just kind of going, huh, what's in that shoulder? What's in the other one? Hmm. Make 
Make sure to switch directions. And again, as we move throughout our practice, always, always taking great care of the neck. So anytime you need to move the head into a different position, uh, please do. That's critical. And release. Good. I'm going to turn sideways so that you can see, but I'm going to interlace my fingers for yoga mudra and draw it down. Reminder that if you're not able to get those arms straight, grab a strap or a belt or a scarf or a sock and bring the hands apart until you can create that powerfully straight arm. I really want that tricep to click in. I'm going to take my feet a little wider, bend the knees and add the hands up to the sky. And release. Nice. And now we're going to turn sideways again on the mat if you had moved. So you're like so. Take your feet nice and wide. And we're going to turn the right foot 90 and just pulse into our warrior lunge here. So this is the warrior two lunge. That back foot is 90 degrees. That front foot is towards the end of the mat. I'm going to add the arms and hold in the pose while you can move the arms left and right, like you're turning really large doorknobs. And you can also rotate the head as you do this. So we're creating some wonderful movement all the way to the upper back and even down the ribs potentially. Good, and let's switch, turning the other foot towards the end of the mat. Really feel it, don't just do it. Again, be curious, feel it. Good, and switch again. And now we're gonna come into a little flow. So uh, kind of um, exalted warrior to lateral stretch and it is basically. So I want you to keep that right knee bent for now. Reach up through that right arm, following it with the gaze if you can. Exhaling, flow forward, right elbow to thigh. Inhaling, reach that left arm over your head, right? Our nice lateral stretch. And exhaling, come back up. Inhaling, right arm up. You can straighten the leg if you want to give it that little variety. Exhaling, flow forward. Inhaling, reach that left arm up beyond the head. Mm. Exhaling, return upright. Good. One more time. Inhaling, root and reach. Send those hips forward. Exhale, flow forward, elbow landing on thigh. Inhaling, reaching for the wall beyond the head. And exhaling, stand up and we'll switch feet. Good. Bend that knee nice and deep so you're really exploring how low can those hips go. Thighs externally rotated. Inhaling, reach up through the left arm. Is there more? Exhaling, flow forward, elbow to thigh. Make sure the ribs are engaging upward. Lots of core support. Inhaling, reach that right arm forward. And exhaling, return upright. Inhaling, left arm reaches up. Again, you can straighten the leg if you prefer it. You can also look down. Exhaling, flow forward, elbow to thigh. Check your alignment, honor the breath, is there more? Inhaling, reach. Exhaling, return upright. One more time. Inhaling, left arm up, really sending those ribs forward. Exhaling, flow forward. Remember, we're not leaning on the knee because we're so in our core. Reaching that right arm forward. And exhaling, return upright and to your straddle. I'm going to have you turn your feet out now a little bit, just enough of an angle that's very neutral and comfortable. If you were to hop and they land, that's neutral. You don't want them overly rotated out. All right. <clears throat> we're going to squat down while we bring the arms up. Remember, you don't have to bring them parallel and tighten and shrug. They could just be up and out at a little bit of an angle. But Wherever you end up comfortably with the shoulder heads anchored, inhale, sweep up. Exhale, pull down as you straighten the legs. So we're going to keep doing that. Down with the hips, up with the arms. Exhaling, pull and press. Is there more? Good. 
My hope is that on the pulling down, you can really feel the engagement in these core muscles. So make sure, keep going, make sure that that pelvis is a little bit tucked. If you're in like a big arch like so, these muscles won't be able to work, right? So we want to be nice and neutral or a little bit tucked. A few more. You can even imagine that you're really pulling down on something powerful. Last one, this direction. And then we're going to go forward. So inhaling, sweep forward. Exhaling, pull back and really straighten those legs. Use those muscles to draw in towards the bone. And I'm kind of, kind of trying to create a shoulder blade sandwich back there. So I'm making sure that it's not just that I'm pulling with the shoulders, it's all the muscles in the upper back. Again, as well as the, the lat muscles. A couple more. So notice, can you create this kind of power in your lower and mid body without taking it into your tongue, your eyebrows, your jaw? Nice. And release. Walk those legs in. And we're going to roll up wrists and ankles. Again, if you ever feel your upper uh, shin when you're rolling your ankle, you'll feel all those connections up into the knee joints. All right, and then we're going to do a little foot stretching. So come onto the ball of the foot and then curl the foot under. Down the ball and curl under. So this is a really great stretch to do, you know, throughout the day or daily. Um, you don't have to be on a yoga mat. You just don't want to do it on a hard floor when you're in this position because it could feel kind of, kind of ouchy. And the other foot. Kind of pressing forward through the shin. You can sometimes get a good stretch up into that shin, especially depending on what you've been up to. And release. Nice. All right. <clears throat> We're going to come to the front of the mat. Nice mountain stance. We're going to go through a little warrior flow. This first time we'll come from standing, and then I'll give you an option to come from dog fly, leg flying, which you can also, of course, just return to this. So let's just find our slower, steadier breath right here. You might have arms in jet airplane. Perhaps they're feeling good in prayer today. Whatever feels appropriate. Eyes closed. Perhaps you want a more engaged posture. You could certainly reach up in standard mountain or Tadasana. Witnessing breath, how it plays upon the body. We should be able to feel it in many more locations than just the chest or the front abdomen, out into the side of the rib cage, into the back. If you're really expanding, you might feel it into the lower back and pelvis. On the next inhale, root and reach up, asking, is there more? Exhaling, prayer hands, lifting the left knee into standing crane. Really feeling your feet. So I've got the left foot in yoga toes. Good. Playing with balance, proprioception. Remember to push heavily with your standing leg into the ball of the big toe. And hopefully that'll help you balance as you slowly reach back. Crescent lunge. Pause. Stabilize hip bones forward. And I'm going to take us into some range of motion stuff with the arms. You can always stay static, of course. But otherwise, I'm going to do a little just slicing. I've got my um, fingers kind of activated, pressing towards each other. So I've got like a little blade and I'm just slicing. And I'm wanting to make sure that I'm not, again, lifting the shoulder joints or stressing the trap at all. The work is coming from way down around the blades. So particularly when your arm is up, see if you can feel that shoulder blade wingtip tuck in. Just a couple more. And the next time your right arm is up, pause, exhale, rotate open, Virabhadrasana 2, Warrior 2. Good. And we've been here this morning already, this evening, whenever you're practicing it. So scooch that foot a little deeper if you can. Yeah. Breath rising and settling. Again, you can be in any hand or arm position that appeals. I'm going to invite you to take that left arm around into a partial bind. So turn the palm back 
and get the hand settling on the low back. Kind of press into it with your core, connect. And now inhaling, reaching up and back through that right arm. Again, always taking your neck where it's in ease. And using that right arm to kind of pulse a little bit like you're painting a little bit of uh, part of the ceiling. And slowly for, flow forward for lateral stretch, elbow thighs, shoulder head anchors. And now we're gonna unwind that left arm and take it into a nice circling motion. So I'm circling it forward and then down and back and up. And what happens in your circling back and up if you also let your rib cage open towards the ceiling? It's a nice spinal twist. One more, and then plant the hands to step back, downward facing dog. Come onto the ball of the back foot, and powerful core as you release. Mm. Downward dog, intelligent hands, middle finger forward, and just take a moment to kind of roll through the feet. You can even take the feet out to the edges of the mat, and as you press each heel to the floor, you'll get some nice side to side movement too. Our body really craves that. We do too much that's in kind of a, a forward path of motion. Marvelous. And I'm going to walk my hands back to my feet. You could also step or jump forward. But if you're doing this with me, really take your time to push and elongate with each press. We get such a beneficial uh, engagement through the shoulders there. <sighs> And when you're ready to come up, drop the butt, inhale, root and rise, big glute squeeze if you like, and prayer hands to the front of the mat. We do those glute squeezes because it, it really helps to, again, rebalance out uh, what's supporting the pelvis. We get so overly tight um, through these front and that back area gets really kind of overly stretched from sitting a lot and it feels really good to contract it. So as you are ready, Find your mountain feet. Again, they're just about six inches apart. Root and reach. Notice heart rate. And on your next inhale, root and rise up. Exhaling, prayer hands, right knee lift, standing crane. Yoga toes. Pause. Think about that standing leg, any of the proprioceptive work that's happening in the foot. Try not to use the neck, tongue, or jaw to uh, keep your balance. It doesn't work, but it's a weird habit that we have. Breathing slowly, stepping back, reaching, and landing as gently as you can. Steer the hip bones forward. Good. And I'm going to invite you in that slicing motion, but this time out to the side. So I'm going to rotate my palms forward and I'm going to reach slicing up with one hand and down. Keep thinking about the thighs internally rotating, if you will, so that those hip bones are straight forward. I've got a really strong base. And remember, you don't have to bring the arms all the way up. So if you're feeling any stress through the neck tricep area, just don't go as far up. And the next time that your left arm is up, pause, inhale, and exhale, rotate open, warrior two. Again, check for the external thigh rotation now so that you can really see that the legs are straight. It's as if you're between two panes of glass. Then you might join me in a partial bind, bringing that right palm back and then sliding the hand around behind on the waist again it's active present i'm going to draw my core back into it boom and inhaling reaching up through that left arm so keep in mind that the ribs the hips and the ribs are all moving forward and then it's just that reaching back along the ceiling and again pulsing like you're painting a strip of the sky And maybe you're petting clouds. We've had some wonderful cloud formations lately. One more long inhalation. Notice where it fills you here. 
exhaling, flow forward, lateral stretch. Slowly unwind that top arm and begin reaching forward and down and back and up. So it's a nice circle moving forward. Start to let your rib cage follow. So on the forward sweep, I'm letting my rib cage face the floor. And on the upward sweep, I'm going to start to see if I can let my ribs open to the sky. You might get a nice free chiropractic adjustment here. This is also a balance challenge if you're following it with your vision. One more time. Really be in your core as you rotate and plant those hands. So I'm very suspended and supported. And step back. And again, pedaling, noticing. Marvelous. And then please just drop the knees wide, bring the feet together, and press back to your child's pose. If this doesn't work for your knees or something you could do, um, just walk the hands back to the feet and do a nice rag doll. Both poses are wonderful for helping release through the low back sacral area. Deep abdominal breath will accentuate that. And for this moment, simply give in to gravity. Nothing to know, do, or accomplish. In fact, let's add three sighing breaths. A nice long inhale. <sighs> Is there more? <sighs> Work. We're going to come out of this pose always by tucking the tailbone, engaging the abdominal muscles. So there's no pressure on my shoulders. My hands are kind of just there, but I'm not pushing up from that point. If I bring those knees in directly under the hips, maybe bring the hips actually a little behind the knees as you move into your puppy stretch, you can always deepen the angle later. So we want it to be easeful to come on down to the forehead. If you need to put a block or something under your head, do if it's kind of dropping and not being comfortable. You want to just be able to rest the forehead and have the spine be one long line. Again, if you'd like to scooch forward a little bit, you can. You never want to go past uh, the hips forward, past the knees. Um, it tends to actually take the body out of the good stretch and into just some compression in the spine. And we let breath move us here, massage, open spaces that are compressed. So really emphasize the inhale. Is there more? I hope you're feeling a lifting and settling of the body. One more. Nice. And once again, we're going to come out of this pose by rounding into our back body, tucking the tailbone and bringing those hands back under the shoulders. We're going to come back up into downward facing dog and let's see how much we can get our core to take us there. So I'm curling my toes under, inhaling cow pose, drawing the heart forward away from the tailbone, exhaling cat pose and use the strength to go right up. Downward facing dog. Good. Bring those feet in so that they're no more than four to six inches apart. And pause with me here to really check your pose. So you might have your knees bent now and maybe always in order to really be able to elongate through the spine. We don't want to have the, the legs straight and be kind of shoulders over the hands. We really want the one long line from the fingers through to the tailbone reaching up and back. Good. Slowly. Take the right leg flying without losing any alignment if you can. Notice, make adjustments. You can always bring that foot back and try again. Otherwise, one more breath here, really pressing through that right heel like you're trying to push the wall behind you. Exhale, and we're going to come forward like we're coming into plank, but I'm going to bring my right knee across to the left tricep. So it's a little plank with a little kind of abdominal crunch. Inhaling up and back. 
exhaling knee to tricep. You could do this in table instead or on your forearms. It's a little awkward, but if you're having wrist discomfort, that's an option. Last one, is there more? So then I want you to just place that right knee below your hip, plant your left foot, we're moving into gate pose, check that you've got one straight line between the hand, knee, foot, and that back heel. Squeeze that right glute towards the left edge of the mat. That's really important. That's going to give us our stability like we have in Warrior Two. Let that open that left arm to the sky. If the balance is tricky, start with it on the hip and then proceed. Make sure that that floor shoulder is anchored down, that the ribs are anchoring up, and always take your neck into ease. Good. Deep breath and just see if you can release that back foot, flexing it. Maybe planting it and briefly seeing if you can lift your knee, your right knee. You might even be able to straighten that leg forward for a little fun. Deep breath in and release. Nice. We're going to do the other side, but not quite yet. We're going to give our wrists a break. So come on down to the floor. Roll out those wrists. Good. Anchor the pelvis, preparing for jet airplane. Shoulder heads anchoring, fingertips tense, and remember to keep that neck neutral, so I'm on the forehead. Anchor pelvis. I know that's hard if you've got glasses, so just do what you can. Inhaling, extend. Exhaling, and return. So we can do a combination, right, of hands reaching off the floor, spine extending so the heart comes off the floor. Some people also enjoy extending through the legs so that they're somewhat off the floor. Notice if that adds a bunch of low back tension. And if it does, just keep the legs rooted and play with the upper body extension. One more and hold if you can. If it's too much, don't. And let's enjoy reaching one arm forward, one arm back. Kind of doing a little windmill here. And release. Press back child's pose. Plant the hands, shoulder heads, anchor, and butt to heels. Or again, ragdoll on your feet would be your alternate. And your arms might be forward. Sometimes people bring them back alongside the legs or even inside the legs. Lots of options. Let's come into three sighing breaths again. feeling anything particular in the body just as this is such a powerful chance to notice what the body is saying or experiencing that it may be saying during daily life too but we're you know zipping around and mentally busy with everything else so um, always take that moment to scan and go hmm, what's in there all right we're going to come into downward dog again so I'm going to tuck my tailbone and come on up to table pose, intelligent hands, middle finger forward, others wide, shoulder heads anchor. Good. Inhaling cow. Exhaling cat to downward facing dog. Again, play. Notice, do you need a knee bend to be in your best downward facing dog? And shoulder heads are anchored out away from the ears so that as I take my left leg flying, I shouldn't feel much of a shift in the upper body. I'm not leaning or bending my elbows. Good. One more long inhale like you're pushing on the wall behind. Gaze is right between where the feet were together. <laughs> Exhaling, keep rounding the back as you bring yourself towards plank, left knee towards that right elbow. Hold, is there more, is there more? Inhaling back up. Exhaling. A little crunch. Is there more? Is there more? Don't let that back foot rotate or let that leg get weak. It's a big part of your structure here. One last one. So you're pressing back through that back heel. Thigh to the sky. And set that left knee down below the hip. Plant the right foot. 
Squeeze the left glute towards that right edge of the mat and open on up to your gate pose. And if you like the balance challenge, you can send your gaze up. And playing, speaking of balance challenge, with the option of releasing that back foot, foot flexed. And replacing the foot, option to lift that left knee and potentially extend that leg forward. Again, it can be kind of fun to look up briefly while you do that. And come on back. Nice. One more time, we're coming to the floor. So I'm just going to shift my hands a little forward to inhale to knee down plank. You can also do full plank. Exhaling, bend the elbows, chaturanga, holding with the elbows if you can, otherwise just drop. Inhaling, cobra, anchor the pelvis, shoulder heads anchoring down the back. Nice. And downward facing dog. No wings, no shrugs. <sighs> Setting the gaze directly between the feet. Good. I'm going to invite you in pigeon pose. If you're doing classic pigeon, you could take that right leg flying, bend the knee, and rotate open through both the hip and the chest before bringing the right knee behind the wrist. If you'd like to do pigeon alternate, reclined pigeon, it's a lot more um, stability for the, the knee and joints. So this is often a great go-to. Plus sometimes you actually just get a different stretch here. So if you're doing that with me, it's right ankle on left thigh. I'm gonna bring the whole deal towards me. And I'm gonna hug either just the knee tightly or I might use one hand on the foot just for more kind of support. And I'm gonna rotate a little left. So whichever version you're in, hopefully you're feeling something kind of into the right glute and uh, um, some of it might go into your thigh, a T-band, hamstring, that's fine. Um, but get really curious here and just notice little adjustments and angle, uh, deepening the breath. All of these things can bring you into a, um, a much more intense stretch. And we're kind of looking for that intensity here, what we call the edge. It feels safe and we can breathe into it but it's like, oh wow, that's what we'd like. And when you are ready, switch. If you're on the floor with me, return your floor foot and then the other. And if you want, you can do also some little windshield wipering in between actually. Um, those of you in classic pigeon, you might be playing similarly, doing a little dog series or whatever you want in between. But when you're windshield wiping, if you take those feet wide, you can get a really nice, stretch through kind of again this whole um all the glutes and then everything that wraps around to the front the tensioning wires as i think of them bringing your feet back to neutral cross letting left ankle onto right thigh draw the whole deal towards the chest so again gathering either just the knee or knee and foot and rotating a little right and if you in downward dog and you're taking yourself into that pigeon again always be careful with the knees Take it slow, lots of core support. And even in this laying down version that I'm in, I'm using core activity. I've got my shoulder heads anchored. I'm strongly in that abdominal core because only when the body feels safe and supported will it agree to let go of some of that maybe stored intense tension that I'm, I'm tapping into. Deep, deep breath. And a slow release on out. And we're going to be meeting on our back. So those of you who have been moving in classic pigeon will join us here. We're going to press the hips up to bridge pose. And this I found is just the best counter pose after pigeon. Uh, pre bobo can feel pretty good too, but this is so great for how it balances out. Again, that whole pelvis. So if you have kind of chronic low back stuff, instability, uh, this is your friend, and ideally this pose every day is really key. So I'm going to hold the next time I'm up. I'm going to really work my shoulder heads underneath so I've got no neck discomfort. And I'm going to ever so slowly take one leg into extension at a time. If that's too much, remember you can just hover the foot a little bit off the floor and get a lot of the same benefit, but without any pain. 
um, and, and what we want is stability. So if you're extending the leg but your hip's dropping a lot, I'd rather have you do the foot hover. Try not to use your neck to stabilize, so the shoulders and neck staying fairly relaxed. It's hard to do in this pose. And release, good, knees to belly. And if it would feel good to you, you might come into happy baby, fingers around the big toe or the blades or the ankle. Um, you could also just be playing with straddle or half straddle. This is one of my favorite kind of range of motion movements that I often do in my own practice that really allows some, some wonderful stretching and reorganizing, um, but without having to be weight bearing, right? So all the muscles of the legs, hips, and so on, they're not holding you up right now. They could explore, you can point and flex, feels really, really good. And then we're gonna spinal rock up to seated or however you'd like to get there. Um, we're gonna do a, a little seated spinal twisting. This alone is just, again, a great activity. If you're kind of like, mm, I don't know what I want to do today, but I feel like I need to loosen up and warm my body, my spine, and so on. Just a, a gentle in and out um, going each way. So I'm going to have us sit cross-legged or up on something um, like a bolster is a wonderful addition. Uh, you could also just grab like a couch cushion if you've got one handy somewhere nearby. You want something that's firm enough give you a little upward, a little upward lift. So our spinal twisting, I've got my hands just settling on the thighs. I'm rooting and reaching, inhaling center and exhaling, rotating one direction. Inhaling center, notice how the breath kind of brings you back. Exhaling the other direction. Inhaling center, Exhaling the other direction. So we're going to continue this way for a number of breaths. If you'd like to add a little engagement on the rotation, it's first coming from the abdomen, like you're ringing a ray, but then I can also push a little bit with my hands. Nothing crazy. Just enough to get into that wonderful edge and that deeper twist so that when you do inhale, hopefully it kind of brings you back, it demands that space. We'll do a few more. Feel free to take the head into rotation now so that as I'm exhaling and rotating, I'm gonna look over that shoulder. Inhaling breath brings us back. And let's do one more each side. You might notice if the two sides are different, either in the torso itself or the actual range of motion in the neck. Inhaling back to center to your neutral. Close the eyes and check in. close the physical part of our practice with a little more spinal movement. Um, if you are craving more dog series, we didn't do a whole lot of them. I know a lot of people have a lot of stuff they're already doing with their wrists and forearms. Again, a lot of yard work and who knows what. I keep hearing stories. So, um, But if you're craving more of that, this would be a good time to go into that for that spinal pumping. We're going to do a spinal circling. So I'm actually going to go counterclockwise first. So if you kind of picture a, a clock on the floor like so, I'm going to go counterclockwise and there's no intent to move the head. It might, it'll move along with the spine, but this is just a, a kind of picture a straight line from the tailbone to the crown and the ribs are just kind of circling around it. And we'll do a couple more this direction. This is a great chance to notice, again, this isn't about performing the posture movement so much as <clears throat> really noticing what it feels like 
And if there's any sticky spots, stagnant places, um, it helps us get to know what's actually happening in our spinal column and all the muscles that support. Last time this way, pause in your forward part of the circle. Big inhale, exhale, go the other direction clockwise. And we consider the kind of counterclockwise a great unwinding of patterns, ideas, whatever. And then the clockwise is a place to set in patterns and tension. So it can be kind of fun while you're doing this Sufi grind, as it's called, to just think if there's anything you're intending to set in place in your being. Breathing deeply. The breath does not have to match the movement, although Sufi grind can be done that way. A couple more this direction. And then as you're ready, the last time you're in the forward part of your motion, pause and exhale, inviting you just draw back into kind of a cat back. On a long inhale, root and rise back up to neutral seated. We're just going to do about a minute long meditation. So inviting you, if you're wanting to be in your corpse pose, feel free to do that and get comfortable. But to come inward, close the eyes. Let go of all breath control, a softening, a stilling of movement. Begin to witness the breath simply rising and settling. Notice if the mind wanders and call it back. It may do this thousands of times. But just here for another few seconds, focus deeply inward. This would be a lovely moment to turn inward and appreciate. Appreciate this amazing container that you're in and how complex and wise it is. Also observe if there are any messages from the body. Again, things that it would have you know so that you can care for it that much better, respect it on all of your adventures. If you're feeling deeply settled, I encourage you to stay present and inward for as long as you comfortably can. It's really the, the greatest gift of the yoga practice is that quieting. I'm going to close our practice with three ohms and the bowl, and you're of course welcome to join in or be quiet and enjoy the vibration. If you'd care to join me, gather a long inhale. Shanti, Shanti. Om, peace, peace. 
namaste.